Christ. And so in our life, there needs to be clarity. Clarity, you see. The more clearly you visualize it, the more open you'll be to the opportunities to achieving it. And in the process, you'll become more aware of what God's timing is. There was clarity in Paul's vision. There was clarity in Paul's mission. There was clarity in Paul's message. And the last thing, there's clarity and there was commitment. Paul was fully committed to God's plan to spread the gospel. Paul was fully committed to the plan of spreading the gospel. Paul didn't start something and then put it down when he saw a difficulty. Paul didn't get discouraged real quickly and say, you know, this is not for me. Maybe I don't have the talents to do this. Maybe I don't have the resources to do this. Maybe this is not for me. Well, I'll leave this for this brother, for this sister, for that, for that church, for this situation, for this person, and walk away. Listen, that's failure. But when we come and, we, and, and, and there is a commitment, hey, wait a minute. I need to go back to my calling. My father always used to say this to me. When there was a discouragement, and I didn't see things materialize quickly. See, I come from the McDonald's generation. You, you don't even go inside to get your hamburger. You, you go to the window on the way out. And you keep your foot on the gas pedal because the guy behind you is going to hit you if you stop. So that mentality kind of carries through in my generation, you see. You don't want to wait. you got to have it. Can I tell you something? That's why the world's in a mess right now. Young people were coming out of school and they got to have it right away. Right, absolutely. So what are you doing? You're coming out of school. You didn't make a nickel to your name and you buy a half a million dollar house. You got to have the Jaguar or the BMW sitting out there. You know, you got to have all this expensive clothing. And before you know, you got all this debt. Now you're getting married. You're getting married in debt. And what's happening? There's pressure on your marriage. There's pressure on your children. There's pressure on your life. That's right. That's another sermon. <laughs> Preacher, brother. In Paul, there was a commitment. He didn't just stop. When difficulty came his way, when the jail was in his way, when 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 the, relig when the religious rulers were in his way, when when there was difficulty that was in his way, Paul didn't just give up. Paul looked at it as an opportunity to serve God. There was a commitment. He went back to his call. Wait a minute. Who called? God called me. Who called me? God called me. What's going to happen? He equipped me. He prepared me. He's going to open up this door for me. Are you with me, church? Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Praise God for that. The next time you find yourself in a Philippian jail, give God the glory. That's right. Unless you stole something. There was clarity and there was commitment. And like Paul, we need to seek God on a daily basis so that we don't wander out of his purpose in our life. Amen. The Bible says here in that verse 9 that God has prepared. Meaning, he made ready ahead of time. How many of us know that we don't drop in on God and find Him unprepared? That's right. So in our commitment, what's the first thing that we know? That God has made ready ahead of time. Praise God. It may not look like anything is ready when I get there. It may look like everything is in shambles. But God has made ready. And then in verse 10 it says, God has revealed meaning to take the cover off. It literally means, that word that is in Scripture, it means to take the cover off. God has revealed those things to you and I, to them through the Holy Spirit. God has made ready His great purpose in our life. And when we fully give our life over to Him, He takes the cover off so that we can see it more clearly. Successful results. Somebody stand with me this morning as we just give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Father, we thank you this morning that you have given to us ample opportunity to serve you. You have put your calling on our life. And our desire, Lord, is to bring glory and honor to your name. I pray, Lord God, that you will fortify and strengthen us, Lord God. 
Reveal to us your word in a greater way. Let us not despise the small things in our life and take them for granted. But Lord, in those small things that you've given us to do, Lord, that you will empower us, uh, Father, to bring glory to your name. That you'll give us wisdom, biblical wisdom, Lord, to use in everything in our life, in our finances, in our families, in our work, Lord God, in our church service. Lord, that you'll give us biblical wisdom to go about these things that you will be glorified. Lord, when you are glorified in us outside of these four walls, you will be highly exalted within this service. Father, I pray in our life, do something great. Do something powerful. Remove the things, the hindrances that will keep us from submitting to you. Father, we want to be successful in our working through the Holy Spirit. Prepare us, equip us. Father, put clarity and commitment in our lives. And Lord, we will have a clear message, a clear goal, and we will be committing to seeing it to the glory of God. Father, bless your people. Father, I release them before you in praise and thanksgiving. And that Lord, you will watch over them and be with them and protect them and use them this week for your glory. Father, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Church, go in peace. Glorify God every day.